everyone. I it has been a little while since I've done one full subscriber submitted question video. So today is that day. Um, today I'm doing one from Matt Lawrence and he had some questions. Uh, a lot of them are preparation questions. So his first one is, do autopsied bodies, despite being embalmed, decompose faster than non-autopsied bodies? So the tissue in the body is going to decompose at the same rate. Um, what is going to be different is that the internal organs, everything that was in the cavity and the brain are all contained within a bag in many cases. Some embalmers do put those organs after being treated back into the cavity, not in a bag. And so if they're in a bag, they're going to be decomposing on their own in a contained you know, unit, but that's also can create some gases and that eventually pop open within the body. So there's just different scenarios between how those bodies are getting decomposed. So you can't really put them level to each other to compare um, lengths of time while they're decomposing. Have you ever participated in a grave, grave exhumation or a disinterment, as it would be called, before where the casket was opened. Yes, um, the one I did was about three years the casket was opened and the gentleman was um, decomposed, had liquefied some, and so the interior of the casket was very moist. I know many of you hate that word. Um, a lot of mold. He was covered in quite a bit of mold and um, the wood was all rotted out because of that. Um, wood moisture don't go together. So we had to recasket him. Um, the family could have seen him probably. We could have cleaned him up and um, done a little restoration and, and they probably could have seen him after three years. Obviously he's not gonna look like he just did after he had died, but um, he was viewable, so kind of as we say, you don't have to be perfect, but you can be perfectly viewable. Um, so he could have been viewed. There was definitely a smell um, component to him, but the definitely could have done a viewing. Um, a person dies of a brain tumor. They were in hospice, and they went through a lot of chemotherapy. Is it likely the chemotherapy itself negatively affect the, affected the effectiveness of the embalming? Um, so, we are walking pharmacies in the world today. We're on a lot of medication. So, all the medication that everyone is taking can counteract what the chemicals do during the preservation process. Chemotherapy, radiation, all of those, it's not so much even that the chemical is, is making a huge um reaction with within itself but that the body has been deteriorated so much that there's not as much um, density to preserve um, but what we do is try to get as much preservation we use stronger chemicals a much more concentrated solution we sometimes have to hypodermically inject the fluid so like a very large almost like a smaller trocar larger needle where we're injecting the fluid into places um, you know from the outside in or we do topical embalming where we place packs of fluid on the tissue and leave it so that it can soak in from the outside in if the vasculature system is is not doing what it needs to do um, what we see a lot of times is we'll embalm what seems like good results, we go back the next day and the body is very loose. We say loosey-goosey, um, that the body is very loose, that what kind of formed or kind of solidified on the first day was very loose on the next. Here in the south, the soil is often moist and despite a sealed casket and vault, would it help preserve a person who'd been buried 25 years ago um, if they are decomposed with the decomposition below ground be more liquefied or mummified? These questions are so hard to answer because you can bury two people, same conditions, same casket, same vault, same ground, and get two different decomposition results. And the most logical answer that I can give 
Um, when you're in a sealed casket in a vault in a high moisture area, you're going to have condensation, so you're not going to mummify because there's too much moisture to mummify. It needs to be dry in order to do that. So that can happen anywhere. In the south, somebody is going to decompose a little more quickly than up in the north here because we have the freeze and it gets a lot colder down below ground. And so that does slow the decomposition where you get down into the hot, humid, kind of wetland areas. Uh, it's definitely going to advance decomposition. I know bodies react differently to embalming fluid and that some bodies embalm easier. What percentage of the bodies that you've tried to embalm didn't react well to the embalming fluid? thus making it ineffective. I think saying ineffective is pretty big. Uh, it doesn't mean that there hasn't been preservation. It just means that our optimum result is not happening. So we might just be having to take those other paths where we do pack embalming or you know topical embalming or um, hypodermic embalming. And so we may just have to take different routes to get that final result and it may not not be our you know most stellar embalming result but as long as we're getting the preservation the point of embalming is preservation it is allowing the family to have that person around for a longer period of time and to some people it's you know having their body be preserved as long as possible because they're you know scared of of decomposing or they're scared of you know what happens later so there's different reasons people choose it but the, the point of it is preservation. So the full point is not just to make somebody look prettier for the visitation. It's preservation. That is the key point. So as long as we are doing that part of it, we have done our job embalming. It, other preparation of the person to make them look good for the visitation, that is a secondary item. I would say in terms of bodies that I have cared for, I don't even know a percentage. I, it's every few bodies. You just are not getting the response. And there's so many factors now that we get somebody that who died an hour ago, but they already are showing signs of severe decomposition because parts of their body had died days before their heart actually stopped. So we're dealing with a lot more variables than ever were existing before and a lot of that is medications and medical advancements and what we're doing to keep people alive longer when their bodies are ready to go. Hopefully these answered some of your questions. Um, I know you're asking these questions out of some very specific events that have happened and people that you've lost. So if you have more question about my um, comments, please make sure you email me, carry at carrynorthy.com, or post comments below. Um, but as always, I will see you guys soon and send in your questions. Bye.